In today's video we're going to be taking a look at Forza Horizon 4 and some of the stunning photographs that you can take using the photography section. Now here's just a sample of some of the pictures that I've already taken and done a little bit of post app editing uh, to create the most realistic look I can get really from just a few minor touches using the apps. Now some of the apps that we're going to be using are the Xbox app and the Snapseed app and also two other apps that are really worth picking up just for editing is Juxtaposer and Inlight. Now unfortunately the last two apps I don't believe are available on Android but I'm sure there'll be something very similar and none of these pictures that I've taken have been taken using anything other than the game itself and with a little editing from the apps. So without further ado let's get into how this all works and just how easy it is to produce some stunning photographs. So as you can see, a great place to start for inspiration for anything these days is just punching it in on the internet. And as you can see, we've got loads of car pictures that we can sort of get some ideas from, things that we might be able to work with. And then if there's something that you're really wanting to be a bit more specific with, you could just type in the name of the car that you're really wanting to work with and see what comes back from there. Once you've found something you want to work with, it's literally a case of just pushing on the picture, swiping up on the screen and saving it. Here's another one that I've saved that I'm going to be working with. And here's a few that I'm just going to work with. They're a little bit more, um, should I say, professional in the tools that you're going to need, but they're certainly fun to do. So without further ado, let's move on to the next stage. So once you've spent a little bit of time in the game, you'll get to learn some of the areas that are pretty key for taking pictures. One of them here, I think it's in the Lego area. It's quite a good area for taking pictures. You've got the uh, old barns and stuff like that. Look at the landscape. You've got the mountains in the background. But yeah, I'm just trying to get, if you remember the, um, the reference image that we're going to be using, I'm just trying to get as best possible a similar angle trying to see how the lighting's hitting the bonnet as you can see we're not sort of getting the same sort of level of lighting from the natural lighting in most um, showrooms they use lots of little floodlights in the ceiling to create lots of reflections it just really shows off the contours of the car so at the moment i'm just working through trying to um, sort of get all the bonnet in focus using the aperture. If you extend the aperture all the way to 100% open, it, focus, it focuses very much on a small area. And then if you open the aperture up, you would get the whole picture. Everything that's on the screen would be in focus. So the higher the number of the aperture, the less area of focus you're gonna get. So I'm just sort of working through using the panning as well to see if that gives me a little more um, sort of out of focus beyond the bonnet, but I'm getting the whole bonnet in focus. And again, as you work through the contrast and everything, just work to the extremes and then you'll see too much sort of darkness or too much brightness. And then just work your way back a little bit till you get a happy medium. You sort of wanting to bring out the blacks and same also with the colour, you're not wanting to, it to look too colourful and fake, but you're not wanting to look totally drab and cold and almost going into black and white. And again with the brightness here, I'm just working up the way. And again with the sapia, sapia just sort of adds like a yellow tinge to it. it almost takes it to a black and white, but it's generally quite an old looking image when you use the sapia and the temperature will also, you know, you can bring sort of a much more silvery look to the bonnet, but much colder. And that's all I'm doing with the, um, with the little controls there. Once I'm happy with that, I'll save it, save it to the folder and then uh, move on to the next location. So once that's saved, I did venture to another area just to see if I could get 
better reflections in the middle of a forest. And it did look much better here. I wish I'd done the, the end photo in this location rather than waiting for it to get to night time and just use the spotlights in the stand there to try and bring out some of that reflection that I was on about. I think it just needs probably a couple more rows of floodlights to really get that image but I've really not explored the game so much to be able to know where all these good locations might be and where the best sort of lighting is there might be a very specific staged area you can um, go and park underneath and really get some nice effects on the bonnet get the reflections looking really cool um, so yeah I'll leave you as this uh, sort of plays through what I was doing and uh, just fast forward it a little bit I don't think it ends up the best image but it's one that we can work with for when we're editing So moving on to this next one, I thought I'd just have a little play around with the lighting through this tunnel section. And it's probably not the first one I've seen through these tunnels, but just thought I'd have a mess around with it. It's nice with the water and the reflections and everything. It's certainly an area that you can just press that reset button, bring it back to the customs and just work from, from obviously you've got a moving image this time. So using the shutter speed, obviously the, the higher or the lower the shutter speed, the less it will capture a moving vehicle. So yeah, so if you had if you had a still image and the car wasn't moving, you could use it on zero. It's not going to make any difference. But if you want to capture speed, you're going to have to start increasing the shutter speed. And then just just messing around here, yeah. just bringing the color in, just adding some just choosing where to focus on the car itself and then pulling it back to set the the picture and it did in a different um angle so i'm clicking focus on the car and then moving back to where i want to start editing the picture so it still keeps the car in focus but everything else is going to look slightly blurry so that was the ending image and then just move that on and save that So once I've taken all the images I'm looking at taking and we're going to edit, going into the main menu and come across to the creative hub and down to the photo gallery section. And I'm just going to select each one of these pictures, load it up onto the screen. And then I'm going to press the home button on my controller and just take a screenshot. So I press the home button and then the Y button. I can't record it while I'm doing this. And it's much easier for me to be able to copy it onto my phone without having it being recorded onto the HDD drive. So I'm going to go away and do that now. I'm going to download all these pictures onto my phone using the app, which I'm going to show you how to do next. And then we can start editing them all. See you shortly. So after we spent a little bit of time in the game gathering all our pictures together and putting them into the capture section, we can now go to the app and download each image, remembering to turn it to landscape mode, take a little screenshot and save that to your pictures. And then I'm going to go and do that with all the other pictures that I've taken and then bring it right back to a little folder. And there's all the pictures that we're going to be using for this session and maybe a few more that I've don't particularly need but we, I might have a look at them and show you the outcomes so there are all the pictures we're going to be using and let's uh, let's move on to the next section so first of all let's take a little look at this Snapseed app it's a brilliant app these and I use it so much obviously starting out there from a previous one that I'd already done and then obviously it goes to portrait mode and then we flip back to landscape having chosen the one we want to work on. Now obviously the size of the image we want to do something with. So in the top right corner we're going to use the crop icon. Now you can use the selection of different ones down the bottom or you can just drag and drop to what suits best. So here I'm just trying to reposition 
and get it as similar to the original picture that we were working from as possible. And just remembering at all times, this is just using my iPhone. I've got an iPhone 8 Plus, so the screen's fairly big, I suppose. But we're just using fingers here and gestures as you would normally, just closing the fingers and using one finger to drag left and right. And we're just going to work through the settings, really, each one at a time. And it's nice how you can just pull them left and right really quickly and just get a really quick idea as to how it's affecting the image. Obviously, we're trying to look for quite a coldish sort of image to get it similar to the one that we're looking at. So definitely going to use the saturation more towards the left hand side. And I'll just let you see as I work through these, just what sort of effect that they're having. And you just sort of slide up with your finger to change the menu selection and then left and right really so intuitive so once you're happy with the selection of where you think it looks best if you use the icon in the top right corner as you press on it it shows you what the image looked like before you started any editing so you just put a finger on and finger off so now I'm moving to use the detail section, which is the second in on the top. This really does start to crisp up the image and just brings out loads more detail. It really is such a good um, little menu. But yeah, using the top right hand corner again, you'll see me just pressing on and then releasing off just to show you how the image looks before and after, before and after. So once we're happy there, we're going to move back into the menu and just we're going to come down now and use just down in the bottom right is lens blur. Now, again, this is just a really intuitive thing. You're just going to move your fingers in and out to change the shape of the circle or you can use lines or hexagons or whatever you want, really. Just the three little menus at the bottom of the screen and you can press on the middle menu which you just slide up or slide down and that shows you the transition which just brings the outer edge if you use the transition just sliding with your finger left on the screen and it just brings the transition phase down a little bit and then the other one just sliding up again just gets rid of the vignette or vignette i'm not sure how that's pronounced but yeah, it's so easy. It's such a great app to use. And again, just pressing the top right corner to see what it looks like before and after, and then pressing the accept button, and then the usual figure down the bottom right hand side, and just save and copy, and that's it done. And it makes such a difference. So just going through this next one really quickly. I'll make a selection. And then if you remember, this one was slightly smaller in screen wise. So we're going to use the crop function once again. And I'll just speed this up a tiny bit, just twice speed so we can whip through it. And obviously using the rule of thirds, we're always trying to put something interesting on the intersections where the lines cross. So getting the lighthouse on there and then one of the ally wheels. It's always supposed to make for a better picture, so they say. And again, just sliding up with your finger and then left and right as we go through each of the menus. And obviously seeing it like this, you can really see how quickly and how drastic the changes can be really from one side to the other. And just how much that's just bringing out the ally wheels. Oh, making them just really dark. I think it's the last one that really brings out the alloy wheels. Yeah, I mean, just look at the difference that makes. Just gives them a real pop. I'll just let this one roll through and you'll see. I do have a little look also at the um, high dynamic range option, which I don't use during this video, but like I was mentioning, 
just you can see the difference that that makes it makes a huge difference just to the lines on the bonnet and everything so i use the hdr scape just for a second it really brings out the clouds brings out the elements and you can tone that down a little bit but i choose not to use it on this one and just go back to how i was editing the picture anyway and then just adding the blurry section to it really the lens blur and I'll just let that time out. So in this section, we're going to use or try something slightly more different, slightly trickier. And I had the idea of using this mercury. I've changed the colour of it to suit the same one I found in another picture with a girl in the picture. And I'm trying to superimpose her image onto the picture that I've taken. Now, this is something I've tried um, on a few other occasions, really. And it's pretty simple to do um, using the Mixer app and or mix a section of the app it's just a one of the sidebar options i'm just erasing sections of the picture and then i'm just trying to re realign the wheels so that they're a similar size i started out using the internal hub section and then i just thought the the outer ring was a much easier sort of contour to follow so i'm just going to try and do that and just change the overlay so that I can see the under the under picture easier as I'm trying to align them. So I eventually get that aligned. It looks sort of right, so I just carry on with the sort of erasing. Just working my way around the picture, you just use your fingers to zoom in and out and it's just sort of rubbing your finger back and forward across the screen and then I noticed that the roof line is totally different um, to where the, the wheels positioned which is going to cause a bit of a problem because I'm wanting to use the reflection in the rear window I want to leave that reflection in there so it looks more realistic so I'm just trying to gauge the, the top the shape of the the shape of the top of the car to get with the window really, getting the shape in the window right uh, as to how I'm aligning this. It is a little bit tricky but I think it's worth it at the end of the video. It does, does look really, and, and that the door really does line up quite nicely even where I put it. I wasn't actually looking at how the, the skirt sort of trapped in the door. So I sort of go with that and think that yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So I'm just zooming in on this bit because I'm trying to keep the image sort of like the shadow but I'm still wanting to try and keep a little bit of the the under image underneath the shadows just trying to get rid of some of those I wasn't sure if it was actually in a, a reflection but it's actually from the underneath paintwork so I, I left it on for a section but I will go back and remove that and I just took out a tiny bit too much uh, shadowing here really it does detract from the picture. I forgot to put the shadowing back in that I'd taken out of the tarmac. But you'll see at the end result, it's, it's not a bad end result considering it was a very quick, quick bit of work, this. So I'm just skipping forward a tiny bit here just to save some time on the video. And as you can see, as we get round towards this window, it really has worked out quite nicely. Obviously just trying to keep that reflection 
there's left a little bit of um, the under layer of the chrome but it still works really well I don't think it's noticeable really in the picture and obviously if you could spend a little bit more time getting all the tiny little bits of detail out of the picture just rubbing back and forward with your finger just really polishing it up so just taking the tiny little blemishes out there and then we're almost finished really I quite enjoy doing them everyone each to their own but certainly adds just a different element to it if you want to be able to control the picture element Well that's it guys, hope you've enjoyed the video and thanks for watching and as always, until next time, ciao for now.